let's look at the solution of uh, prime puzzles episode 26 a card shuffling machine always rearranges cards in the same way relative to the original order of the cards all of the hearts arranged from top to bottom in order from ace to king were put into the machine the cards were shuffled and then put into the machine again after the second shuffling the cards were in the following order from top to bottom 10 9 Q, 8, K, 3, 4, A, 5, J, 6, 2, 7. What was the card on top after the first shuffle? Okay. And we have whatever. What was the card? What card was fifth from the top after the first shuffle? At what place was from the bottom would the card six be after the third shuffle? For how many cards does the position change uh, exactly by two? If they were numbered from top to bottom in any shuffle in uh, top to bottom in any shuffle in any shuffle, how many players? Okay. Basically, we are expected to figure out the order in which shuffling takes place. The set has very little initial information, but the subsequent information is all about how in what order does the shuffling take place. We have to figure that out. So, recording wise, what you would have to do is record something like this. Initial situation is this. You have A, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so on and so forth. And then in round two, you would have this. Now, given that after round two of shuffling, after round two of shuffling, the order has changed, which would mean from round one, uh, from the initial situation to the position when the round one shuffling has taken place, then also a situation should change. Okay. Now, if you try to attempt it with brute force, if you try to attempt it with brute force, there are going to be 13 cases, oh, sorry, 12 cases that you would have to check. The first case being this, you put two here. If two has moved this way, this 10 would have been here. If 10 has moved from here to here, then if 10 has moved from here to here to first place, can you see the nine that has come in the second, uh, after round two, nine that has come, nine would be here. This triangle and this triangle. Now, because nine has come from this place to this place, from the ninth place to the tenth place, from the ninth place to the tenth place, J, which is present in the tenth place after round two, it would imply that J was in the ninth place after round one of shuffle. So let's go circle and circle. Now J has moved to J. So five, if it has moved from uh, J has moved from here to here. So from first round to from the initial to the second round, J has gone from 11th to ninth spot. So five would have gone from 11th to ninth spot. Five has gone here again. If six has gone from, oh, sorry, five has gone from fifth place to the 11th place from the initial to round one, five has gone from fifth place to the 11th place. So six should have gone from fifth place to 11th place. If six has gone from sixth place to the fifth place, K should have gone from sixth place to the fifth place. If K has gone from 13th place to the sixth place, three should have gone to 13th place to th uh, sixth place. Three has gone from third place to the 13th place, third place to the 13th place. So seven should have gone from third place to the 13th place. Now seven has gone from here to here. Okay. Now from the initial to round one, seven has gone from seventh place to the third place. So Q should have gone from seventh place to the third place. Okay. Q has gone from 12th place to the seventh place, 12th place to the seventh place. So four should have gone from 12th place to the seventh place. Okay. So far, so good. Four has gone from fourth spot to the 12th spot. Four has gone from the fourth spot to the 12th spot. So now that you have two here, now that you have two here, two should have gone from fourth spot to the 12th spot. The problem with this is we already have a two. You cannot have two at two different places which would mean all, all the positions that you have assigned right now would be incorrect.
let us get into the second case checking. Let's say we move the third card till here. If three goes from here to here, 10 would have come from here. Hopefully by now you have also figured out, can you see if you have this pairing here, three 10 from round one to round two, from initial to round one also you are getting the same pairing. Similarly, if you're getting 10 to Q here, if you're getting 10 to Q here, in the prior round also, you would get 10 to Q. QJ here, she would also get QJ here. J2 here, she would also get J2 here. 2, 6 here, she would also get 2, 6 here. 6, 9 here, you would also get 6, 9 here. 9, 3 here, you would get 3 again. And this is a problem. You have a 3 here, you have a 3 here. The same card cannot be present at two spots. So this is unacceptable. Hopefully the effort that is involved here is visible to all of us. Hopefully the effort that is involved, if you want to apply brute force and solve it that way, it can work out. But can you see, you would have to check 12 different cases and it will become extremely difficult to keep track or do it within a limited amount of time. What comes to our rescue here is the first question. What card was on the top after the first shuffle? If we can answer this question, if we can answer this question, we would know precisely how the shuffling takes place. Additionally, we only have to check four cases instead of the 12 that we had to check earlier. And within these four cases, do you remember two we had already checked? So this is definitely not the answer. The answer has to be one of these three. Let us go on check if six was moved. I have 610 here. I should have 610 here, 10, 3 here, 10, 3 here, 3J here, 3J here, JQ here, JQ here, Q6 here, Q6 here. And this is an unacceptable case because 6 and 6 cannot be at two spots. So 6 or the second option of first question is also incorrect. This is also incorrect. Let us check option D straight away. I'm checking option D because I know answer is C. I'm checking option D just to show you, even if you went ahead and checked the three wrong options first, how would you arrive at the right one then? So if J came here, I have J10. So J10, 10, 6, so 10, 6, 6J. So 6J, and this is unacceptable. I have two J's in the running now. This cannot possibly work. This is not correct. Okay. So this is also wrong. So I now know nine is definitely coming at the first spot. So nine, I have nine, 10. So nine, 10, 10, five. So 10, five, five J. So five J, J, K. So J, K, K, six. So K, six, six, seven. So six, seven, seven, three. So seven, three, three, four. So three, four, four Q. So four Q, Q eight. So Q eight, eight, two. So eight to two A, so two A. I am able to place all 13 distinct cards in all 13 distinct positions, which would mean this is the correct arrangement. This is the correct way to shuffle them. The first answer is of course C. The second question, what card was fifth from the top after the first shuffle? What card was fifth from the top after the first shuffle? Would be J, option A. J is the right answer. At what place from the bottom would card six be after the third shuffle? The question is asking me about third shuffle now. So let me go ahead and do the third shuffle. I remember it was 10, five. So 10, five, nine, 10, Q eight, eight, two, K six, three, four, four, Q, A nine, five J, J, K, 6, 7, 2, A, and 7, 3. I know all of this. This is wonderful. The question was, at what place from the bottom would card 6 be after the third shuffle? If this is 13th, this will be first from the bottom, second from the bottom, third from the bottom, fourth from the bottom, fifth from the bottom, sixth from the bottom, seventh from the bottom, eighth from the bottom, and ninth from the bottom. The answer to the third question has to be 9. So option A again, for how many cards does their position change exactly by two? If they were numbered from top to bottom in any shuffle, in any shuffle. Okay. So let's see from initial to round one, how many cards shifted their position by two? 
A went from first to second, so its position is shifted by one. Two went from second to eight, so its position shifted by six. Three went from third to seventh, so its position shifted by four. Four went from fourth to third, so its position shifted by one. Five went from five to ten, so its position shifted by five. Six went from six to thirteen, its position shifted by seven. Seven card seven went from seventh to seven. Seventh to seven, uh, seventh to six, so its position shifted by one. Eight went from eighth to twelfth, position shifted by four. Nine went went from ninth to first, position shifted by eight. Ten went from tenth to ninth, position shifted by one. J went from eleventh to fifth, position shifted by six. Q went from twelfth to fourth. So position shifted by eight, and K went from thirteenth to eleventh. Position shifted by two. So the question that is asking me for how many cards does the position change exactly by two? The only card for which the position is changing exactly by two is K. So the answer to the question question four should be B. Now pay attention. The question is asking me in any shuffle. You only have to consider one shuffle. Don't be doing this. We've got K here. For K, it is shifting by one. For six, it is shifting by one. For seven, it is shifting by one. Therefore, the answer should be three. We are only talking for one shuffle, not for multiple shuffles. Just for one shuffle. Okay. Fifth question: How many pairs of cards remain neighbors after a single shuffle? Example: If A and two remain neighboring cards after first shuffle, the pair should be counted. Neighbors can be on either side. Okay. Let's check. Do A and two remain neighbors? No. Do two and three remain neighbors? Yes. Two, three, do remain neighbors after a shuffle. Do three and four remain neighbors? No. Do four and five remain neighbors? No. Do five and six remain neighbors? No. Do six and seven remain neighbors? No. Do seven and eight remain neighbors? No. Do eight and nine remain neighbors? No. Do nine and ten remain neighbors? No. Do ten and J remain neighbors? No. Do J and Q remain neighbors? Yes. Q and J do remain neighbors. I found the second pair. Do Q and K remain neighbors? No. So there are two pairs that remain neighbors after every shuffling. So the answer to question number five will be two. The last question: How many cards moved by the same number of places as nine after the first shuffle? If they were numbered from top to bottom in any shuffle, how many cards moved by the same number as nine? The only cards that moved by eight places were nine and Q themselves. So answer to the sixth question will be two. Somebody might argue, why are we counting nine? Why are we counting nine? Because if the question had been how many other cards moved by the same number of places as nine, then the answer would be one. But right now, when you are asking how many cards moved by the same number of places as nine after the first shuffle, answer is two. In order to draw a parallel, let's say I gave you this. uh b r b r e d this is a four letter word in how many ways can you rearrange the letters hopefully you don't go four factorial minus one because b r e d we cannot count because it is already in that uh, uh, order if you are rearranging you are also counting the case that was there initially similarly here How many cards moved by the same number of places as nine after the first shuffle? The answer should be card nine and card Q both. This is a language-based trap present in question six. Hopefully, you did not fall for it. That is it for set number one. This is an amazingly difficult set. I'm fairly certain this will get added to your repository if at all it exists. Uh, please make sure you see. Once you know how to solve this, you will get it. But then. you the learning that i want you to take away from it is this entire set can be done efficiently if you focus on the sub parts will be done inefficiently if you try to use brute force approach to solve it okay let's get to set 2 now harmony league had just two teams scotland and wales that played 20 friendly t20 cricket matches every match ended in a result that is one team winning and the other losing it was played over 20 consecutive days with each match being played on a different day okay 20 matches on 20 different days 
at the end of six different days, it was observed that Scotland had a lead. Okay. So Scotland was leading after six days. And uh, while Wales had a lead on at the end of 11 different days. So Wales had a lead at the end of 11 different days. The scores were level. That is both had one equal number of matches at the end of three days. So scores were level at the end of three days. Hopefully you can infer right away. Scores can only be level after even number of matches. Because if the score line is 1-1, one, one, then two matches have taken place. If the score line is 2-2, two, two, then four matches have taken place. If the score line is 3-3, three, three, then six matches have taken place. Scores can only be level after even number of matches. Okay. The following additional data is known. The scores are level at the end of only one of the first 10 days. Okay. Scotland won only four of the first 10 matches. Okay. So on and so forth. We have information about who won, what, what happened and everything. Let us also look at the questions. What percentage of total matches did Scotland win? We have something at the end of the seventh day, which of the following is true. Okay. We have something. The result of how many of the matches cannot be conclusively determined. Okay. So question three gives us the hint that there will most definitely be certain matches for which you will not be able to uniquely identify what is the result. And that is fine. Okay. In the first 15 matches, what is the maximum number of consecutive wins that Scotland won? Okay. Which of the following is definitely true. If the scores at the end of each of 15 days were considered, what was the maximum difference in the wins for the two teams? Okay. Information that we have to capture is uh, match number, the winning team, score line, and finally, who had the lead? These are the four data points that we have to capture. That will be captured using a table like this. That will be captured using a table like this. I'm going ahead and writing down stuff that we already know. Wales led on 11 days, Scotland led on six days and scores are level at the end of three days. And this will only happen after even days. This much we know, let us get to individual data points. The scores were level at the end of only one of the first 10 days. Okay. So either two or four or six or eight or 10, two or four or six or eight or 10 had to be have scores as level. We'll see. Scotland won only four of their first 10 matches. If Scotland won only four of their first 10 matches, can I say at the end of match 10, the score line was four, six. I'm counting score as Scotland versus Wales. So four, six. So here Wales was leading. Additionally, regardless of what happened in the prior match and regardless of what happens in the subsequent match, can you see? In the prior match, either the score line was 3 6 or 5 6. Sorry, 3 6 or 4 5. In the prior match, at the end of match 9, score line was either 3 6 or 4 5. In either case, the lead was with Wales. In the after the 11th match, score line was either 4 7 or 5 6. Can I state with confidence, regardless of what the score line was? The lead was definitely with Wales. These things I can infer from point B. Let us get to point C. Between, oh, sorry, between 6th and 15th matches, both included. Wales won exactly 3 matches. So in 16th to 15th matches, Wales won 3 matches. Okay. Next point. Between 8th and 12th matches, both included, Scotland won exactly two matches. From 8th to 12th match, Scotland won exactly two matches, which you translate into. See, this, these are five matches. If Scotland won two matches, then Wales has won three matches in this range. Additionally, what this also translates into is, can you see this range, 8th through 12th, is contained within 6 to 15th? Is contained within 6 to 15. In 6 to 15, Wales has won three matches. And in 8 to 12, Wales has won three matches. Can I happily go on to say on match 6 and 7 and 13 and 14 and 15, for these matches, I know Scotland definitely won. 
for these matches scotland definitely won so let's record that we have scotland scotland 13 okay scotland scotland and scotland this much we know now wales which matches it has won in the range 8 to 12 that we don't know but there will be three matches that they win and two matches scotland will win within this range okay the second third fourth and fifth match was were won by wales okay so this is wales this is wales this is wales and this is wales okay wales won the 12th match okay this is wales at this time can you also infer at the end of the 11th match at the end of the 11th match wales was in lead so, and if the 12th match is won by wales wales will still be in lead at the end of 12th match wales will still be in lead at the end of 12th match okay the scores were level at the end of second and 16th days scores were level okay so score line here was 8 8 and score line here was 1 1 if the score line here is 1 1 do i know the first match was won by scotland and it had a lead of 1 0 lead was with scotland now because i know score line here was 1 1 the next score line would be 2 1 next score line would be 3 1 next score line would be 4 1 next score line would be 4 Two next score line would be four three. We would know Wales is in lead. 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 Up until now we know. Now on the eighth day, on the eighth day, either Scotland will win or Wales will win. If Scotland won, if Scotland won. can you see the score line would become le uh, level the score line would become level and we knew from point a the scores were level at the end of only one of the first 10 days which would mean you cannot have uh, scores level here which would mean scotland cannot win match number 8 it has to be won by wales so score line here okay i have made a terrible terrible mistake i have re recorded the data in reverse order 1 2 1 3 1 4 2 4 3 4 and now the score line would be 3 5 and wales has the lead wales has the lead okay wonderfully well done okay we still don't know acha from now can you see here to here in match 9 and 10 wales has definitely won one more match and scotland has definitely won one more match it has gone from 3 to 4 it has gone from 5 to 6 so can i say here in between these two matches one match will be won by wales and one match will be won by scotland we don't know who wins what match but that much i know for certain Additionally, in this range, Wales had to win three matches. Wales had to win three matches. If Wales had to win three matches, Wales Wales is already accounted for. Wales Wales is already accounted for. You have one win here. You have one win here, and one of the two wins is coming in match nine or match ten. Eleventh match will necessarily be won by Scotland. If the eleventh match is won by Scotland, score line here will be five and six. next match is won by wales so score line will be 5 and 7 next match is won by scotland score line would be 6 and 7 next match is won by scotland score line would be uh, 7 and 7 for the third level situation we know lead here is with wales so scotland uh, so the next match we know that it cannot be level again or do we know anything oh ho oh, we know one wonderful thing now look at this from match 3 to match 13 wales was supposed to be leading after 11 matches 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 all the situations where wales was wales was in lead is recorded 
all the all the situations in which waves was in lead is recorded which would mean in all other blanks three levels are recorded three waves are recorded so in all other situations scotland should be in lead we've got scotland leading in all other situations okay here the score line would be 8 7 here because it is becoming level wales would have won next in match number 17 match number 17 because scotland is in lead of course scotland won and the score line is 9 8 now in the next match pay attention in the next match if wales won if wales won the score line would have become level but we know that the score line is not level it is scotland leading so it is only possible if scotland was leading this so we've got 10 8 we still don't know the score line here the two possible score lines are if scotland won it would turn to 4 5 if wales won it would turn to 3 6 both these outcomes are possible but we don't know what precisely it is for the last two let's see the only information point left is the last two matches were won by the same team now if wales had won both these matches if wales had won both these matches do you see finally the score line would have 10 10 or score line would have become level the fact that scotland is leading at the end of the 20 matches means that wales cannot possibly win the last two matches the last two matches would necessarily be won by scotland only and the score line would thus turn to 11 8 and 12 8 we now have score line after every match except 9 we now have winners for every match except 9 10th 10th we now have lead which team had what lead after how many matches let's get to individual questions first question what percentage of total matches did scotland win scotland won 12 matches out of 20 so it won 60% of the matches at the end of the seventh day which of the following is true at the end of the seventh day score line was 3 4 Scotland had won three. Wales had won four. Scotland had won four matches. No. Scotland had won five matches. No. Wales had won four matches. Yes. Wales had won three matches. No. Answer is option B. The results of how many matches cannot be conclusively determined. The results of matches cannot be conclusively determined for match nine and ten. So there are two matches. Answer should be option D. In the first fifteen matches, what is the maximum number of consecutive matches that Scotland won? in the first 15 matches okay we've got one here we've got one and two here here one of the two even if i take scotland to be winning match number 10 up until 11 it would only be two but match number 13 14 15 can you see there are three consecutive matches that scotland is winning so when the question is asking me what is the maximum number of consecutive matches that scotland won answer has to be option a for match number 13 14 and 15 Question five: Which of the following is definitely true? Wales won the seventh match. No, Scotland won the seventh match. Wales won the ninth match. No, we don't know about the ninth match. Scotland won the tenth match. No, we don't know about the tenth match. Scotland won the thirteenth match. Yes, Scotland did indeed win the thirteenth match. Answer should be option D. Last question: If the scores at the end of the first fifteen days were considered, what was the maximum difference in the wins for the two teams? okay here the difference is 1 here the difference is 0 1 2 3 2 1 2 2 the difference is either 1 or 3 here it is 2 here it is 1 here it is 2 here it is 1 here it is 0 here it is 1 so within this range the maximum difference is at the end of the fifth day and possibly at the end of the ninth day the maximum difference will be 3 the answer to the question 6 will be option a 3 this is also a fun set requires you to record information very appropriately and slowly go through it the bigger challenge here would be people are unwilling to make a 20 match ka outcome ka table once you make that everything else will flow smoothly you will get to the answer here that will be all for this episode hopefully you learned something okay bye